We're here today with Dr. Alex Mitchell to discuss an interesting topic um, of whether exercise helps with depression. Mm. Now, I've been, there's been a lot of publicity around this lately, um, and, uh, and some people have some very strong opinions, and I think the general public is perhaps um, confused about what they should be doing. So um, let me start by asking, actually, what is the recommended amount of exercise that we should be doing anyway? Yeah, I mean, the recommendations don't really differ for those with a mental health concern to the general public. And the recommendations were revised in the UK um, just about a year ago and basically are to participate in 150 minutes of moderate to intense exercise a week, so roughly 30 minutes five times a week. Um, for young people aged 18 or under then it's simplified even further, an hour, an hour a day is, is recommended, so it's actually more for young people. Um, and it's not, not different for those with a mental health concern. There are not specific guidelines for depression on I the, the rate, intensity or duration. It's the, it's the same recommendation for the whole population. Okay, and so how many people are actually even achieve, even of the well population are achieving these levels? Well, according to the NHS kind of national data, uh, it's the minority who are achieving 150 minutes a week. Um, if you look at um, the evidence from the literature worldwide, actually 30% um, fail to achieve it. But in Western countries, in the UK, in the US, 60% fail to achieve it. And, you know, there's big trends that have influenced the health of the population. You know, if you look at um, the amount of time that people uh, spend uh, in relatively inactive jobs in the population, you know, as a, as a percentage of those employed, it used to be in the 1950s and 60s, only 10% have desk jobs or inactive jobs. And now it's 30 or 40%. And if you look at uh, commuting, for example, then um, in the 1960s in the US, two thirds of people used to commute by car, but a third used to commute, you know, not by car. And now it's 95% are commuting by car. Um, if you look at the figures in the UK, then um, less than 10% of people walk to work. If you look at cycling, then less than 2.5% cycle to work. Although you know that in the Netherlands or in Denmark, the rates are much higher because of the culture of cycling, you know, 20% or so cycle to work. So, you know, there's a, there is a trend for us to be more inactive as a population. And that's made the issue of activity and exercise very pressing in relation to the general population and also in particular in relation to mental health. So, just regarding people who are depressed, is exercise actually a recommended strategy? Yes, in the NICE guidelines for depression, the 2009 NICE guidelines, exercise is a recommendation. And um, that's based on evidence that was reviewed in 2009. But the reason that things are confusing is subsequent to that big um, authoritative recommendation, um, at least four individual studies came out which cast a doubt whether exercise actually helped depression. So this is what you were alluding to earlier. Um, often those negative studies have had quite a lot of press, but some of those negative studies are subject to limitations. For example, um, the studies from Denmark, two studies called DEMO1 and DEMO2, had very low sample size. A lot of people didn't take up the exercise offer that was um, made. The same applies to the UK study called TREAD, which is actually the largest study, but basically um, only half of people who were allocated to exercise in that study actually were exercising to a minimum recommended amount. And 40% of people who were under observation but in a control arm were exercising. So there's only a 10% differential between the active and the control arms, basically testing whether the study would work. So that study didn't really show an effect either, for, probably for that reason. And there's an American study also, um, TREAD US from Duke University, which looked at people who'd, who'd failed to respond to an antidepressant. And the, the response rates to exercise were a little bit low at three months. But the issue there was that these were what was called a treatment resistant group. They hadn't responded to the first line antidepressant anyway. If you gave them another active drug, the response rate would have been relatively low. That wasn't tested in that study, it was whether exercise helped. In fact, 30% responded with exercise, having uh, failed to respond with the drug. So, 
yes, it's not 100%, but these were people who hadn't responded to another strategy. So um, those four apparently negative studies in the literature have big caveats, which mean that you shouldn't necessarily just assume because they had publicity that exercise doesn't work. There's another 30 studies in the literature which suggests some at least moderately beneficial effect of exercise on depression. So all things considered, the overall effect is still positive. And there have been three summary studies called meta-analysis in 2013 alone, which show that when you pull all the data together, if the effect is still a positive one. So people should really take home the message that although it's not um, a panacea for everything and not everyone can take exercise to the recommended amount, if you are able to take up exercise, then it's very likely that your mood symptoms will be improved to some extent by that exercise um, activity. Okay. And so of people who are depressed, um, what sort of exercise should they be doing? That's a good question, and it's not fully answered by the literature. I can give you my own opinion and based on my own reading. The ideal exercise is moderate to intense aerobic activity lasting um, at least 15 minutes if it's, if it's significantly intense. And by intense, I mean the person gets out of breath to a significant extent, the heart rate is raised, and um, they're sweating as a result of that exercise. Uh, in fact, building up a sweat is actually a very good marker of intense activity. Um, if that all sounds a bit complicated, we could actually simplify it by, and this has been done in the literature, asking people to wear a device which monitors, monitors their activity. It actually monitors their physical movement, and that's available over the counter, you know, very simply for about £10 these days, a pedometer or an advanced version which measures a whole body movement called an accelerometer. And if we look at pedometer, how many steps people take, that's quite interesting because the recommended amount is actually about 10,000 steps for an average person who's quite active. And anyone can test this out themselves by buying a pedometer and wearing it for a day and seeing whether they fulfill that 10,000. In fact, the studies show most people are really achieving more like 5,000, which is considered to be relatively low. Because if you look at pre-industrial societies, you know, human beings were achieving most around um, 20,000 steps a day in um, year on, year out, you know, and that was obviously in a different culture. Um, but still, it shows you from an evolutionary point of view where we're going to, you know, in terms of deterioration in activity over time. Okay. Um, and so you've, you've talked about the intensity of exercise that we should be looking at um, and from the point of view of how long we should be exercising, I guess you've mentioned pedometers, but if you're thinking of a particular exercise like swimming yeah. or walking um, or running, how long should we be looking at um, to actually make a difference for people who are depressed? Well, that, that's quite interesting in itself because really I would t interpret this question in the following way. Would a low level of exercise, even a few minutes, be beneficial? And there's a study in the literature from the US, it's 2007, which showed that there is an effect of a low level of exercise even in depression, so even a few minutes participation. And in addition, there's population studies, uh, one from Taiwan springs to mind, where they looked at half a million people, and uh, even um, 15 minutes of exercise a day made a difference. So in terms of the actual type of exercise, whether that's um, aerobic activity like swimming, cycling, football, participation in another sport, um, walking, fast walking, those are all definitely beneficial, all, all recommended and, and all likely to be um, an asset, all likely to be therapeutic in regards to depression. However, it is possible, the data on this is not very strong, but it's, it is possible that non-aerobic activity, for example, uh, yoga, calisthenics, um, stretching, um, strength exercises, they also appear in some studies to help depression as well. So if you are somebody who struggles with the aerobic activity, although that would be the gold standard, definitely, because of the health benefits of aerobic exercise as a whole, it is likely that non-aerobic exercise Participation in non-aerobic physical activity will be beneficial as well. And I would say there's no strict minimum, but if you wanted a target, um, clearly the big target is this national guidelines, that, that 30 minutes five times a week. But if you were able to do 15 minutes five times a week, that would still be good. It would still be good. 
and probably more than the average in the general population because the average person in the general population is um, taking about eight minutes of exercise. And if um, I know that people with depression can sometimes have big problems with their motivation as well and you need to be motivated to be um, getting up and out there and doing these exercises. Have you any advice actually directly for people who are struggling with their motivation? Anything that you think will help them get out there and, and, and start exercising more? Yeah, I mean, I would say to those people that, first of all, kind of selling the idea that exercise is likely to help them is the, is the first step. So if that person does engage, they can have a target, which is feeling better about themselves in general, improving their quality of life, um, feeling that their mobility is improved, being able to get out and experience positive things. In addition, a direct, a direct effect on mood is likely. They're likely to experience um, a reduction in mood symptoms. They're likely to have improved sleep. They're likely to have improved vitality. Specific symptoms like energy, concentration are likely to improve as a result of exercise. So at face value, the participation in that exercise is likely to be beneficial. That's the carrot, if you like, to doing it. But let's say that's not enough. I would say then that um, look to uh, group exercise, look to classes, look to sports where people are particip participating together. Your GP might have access to a community gym prescription which gives free access to a local gym. That's definitely another asset if you um, have access to that. Then it will give you priority access essentially for no cost. Um, let's say that is not working and you need something else. A final tip is to um, ask a friend who's in a similar position, would they consider joining something with you or participating in something with you, doing something together, even if it's going for a walk together, going for a coffee, but walking there, that would be um, a great start. And usually it's the start that's the real difficult thing. You know, you see people doing these fantastic things in the Olympics and it's, you know, an incredibly high aspiration. You know, we're, we're, none of us are gonna get to that level, but, if you start with something simple and then build up to the next step and the next step, then before you know it, you can be doing a significant amount which will make you feel better compared to the baseline that you're at right now. Thank you. Um, and just, just look, you mentioned earlier there was a study that compared exercise with antidepressants. Um, and just in a bit more detail, I mean, actually, is exercise more effective or as effective um, than medication or, um, or talking therapies? So there's, there's actually six studies comparing exercise with uh, talking therapies and three comparing exercise with medication. And for the treatment of current depression, they essentially show that um, exercise appears to be as effective in the short term these studies don't run for very long periods of time, generally. Um, the longest follow-ups generally been one year. Um, so within that relatively short space of time, and most of them are three to four months, then exercise seems to be as effective, but no more effective than those other strategies. Probably a combination of strategies. A combination of strategies is, is more effective than any one alone, although not many studies have looked at the combination versus each one on its own. And there is, there is one study comparing um, long-term outcomes for people who are well, who um, are looking for an option to prevent a future depression. And that's the one outlier in the literature that showed that exercise was more, was more effective in a six-month follow-up um, than a medication strategy alone. But exercise didn't work for everyone, and it never does. Like any strategy, it only works for proportion. So the most optimistic outcomes um, from one study in the US, Blumenthal, in 2007, was that people engaging in the maximum degree, 150 minutes a week, 90% achieved remission from their depression, which is, which is good. And obviously, that's, that's, that's good. It still leaves 10% who didn't, who didn't um, achieve that well status. And in the other study, which was looking at prevention of future episodes, um, uh, exercise prevented all but 5% relapsing within six months. That's really helpful, thank you. I think just it might be helpful in summary now, um, just if you could tell us, so does exercise help with depression? In my opinion, based on what we know from all the current studies, 
I believe exercise does help with depression, but it is somewhat conditional upon the person buying into the idea that they can do it, starting with that regime and building up. So the clinicians here and clinicians watching have a responsibility to encourage and help patients to engage in these exercise programs. And the exercise programs must ideally be tailored to that person, to be um, positive activities that that person wants to do. And if, if you're a person at home who's you know feeling depressed, then yes, I would definitely say, give some thought to finding an activity which is based on physical activity, exertion ideally, ideally aerobic activity, which means building up a sweat, but it can be non-aerobic, i.e. calisthenics, yoga, something like that, that um, are um, enjoyable, something that in principle you'll, you will want to do. And I know when you're depressed, it doesn't feel like you want to, you know, you can easily find these activities, you know, interesting activities is blunted. But most people who are depressed, and uh, in my clinic, most people who engage in activities like this, they report to me that having done it, even though they were sceptical, they feel better for it, and they actually enjoyed the activity. And they feel that they can set a new target for themselves, like it's opened a new door for themselves, it's improving uh, their quality of life, and it's opened an, a facet to their life that, that they weren't exploring before. So for all those reasons, I would encourage people to definitely think about exercise in relation to depression. Thank you, Dr. Mitchell.